Douglas Carl Engelbart is a key pioneer of the kind of computing we do today. Interactive, connected, graphical, and personal. As a Navy radar operator in the Pacific, he had read Vannevar Bush's famous article, As We May Think. Its ideas would help flesh out the vision that became his life's work. To augment human intellect with techniques for collectively organizing and refining knowledge. I suddenly wondered, hey, what kind of goals should I have for career? And then for some reason, within five minutes, what popped in my head was, what if I try to maximize the value my career has to mankind? Oh, that sounds good. I have no idea where it came from. Mankind isn't getting all that much more effective at collectively dealing with complex problems. Maybe that's what I could concentrate on. So that's what I committed to. In 1968, Doug's team at SRI showed off many core features of modern computing for the first time in the so-called mother of all demos. There was a new kind of pointing device. I don't know why we call it a mouse. Sometimes I apologize. It started that way and we never did change it. There were windows, hypertext links, collapsible views, and other features for navigating information. If I want to, I can say, the library, what am I supposed to pick up there? I can just point to that, and oh, I see, overdue books and all. Well, there was a statement there with that name on it. Go back. He showed online collaboration, including document sharing, messaging, and video conferencing. I say, now, computer, do the automatic switching that'll bring in a camera picture from the camera mounted on his console, such as the camera mounted on mine is. Hi, Bill. You can see my work, you can point at it, and I can see your face, and we can talk. So let's do some collaborating. Engelbart's lab hosted the Central Network Information Center for the ARPANET and later the Internet. The forthcoming involvement is this ARPA computer network, the experimental network that's going to come into being in its first form in about a year. Engelbart's team practiced a process he called bootstrapping. And this item down here is the term bootstrapping applied in a slightly new sense. We're applying that to our approach where we're saying, we need a, a research subject group to give them these tools, put them to work with them, study them, and improve them. Uh huh. We'll do that by making ourselves be the subject group and studying ourselves. The HIRC is pursuing these goals. Basic goal, improve the effectiveness with which individuals and organizations work at intellectual tasks. What does their effectiveness involve then? Better solutions, faster solutions, solutions to more complex problems, with better use of human capabilities. A number of NLS's technical ideas eventually got picked up by mainstream computing. The mouse, word processing, windows, and simple hypertext links. But the more sophisticated ways of navigating knowledge in NLS were forgotten, from collapsible views to integrated browsing and editing. Most of Engelbart's ideas for improving how organizations function and thus raising their collective IQ also got left behind. One of the big things we talk about about the potential is the kind of a collective intelligence. So if you look at something that you could call a social organism, an organization, and realize that if you drew an envelope around it and watched how it interacts with the outside world, you'd pretty soon be able to get some sense about what kind of IQ it has in it. Like how well does it understand what's going on? How quickly and subtly does it make a decision? How well does it marshal resources and how smart a plan does it make? Da, 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 da. And so how well does it learn what's going on? And how well does it generate new knowledge and creative IQ? A key concept was how computer tools and human organizations could co-evolve. He spent the rest of his career trying to promote his larger vision. He hoped to start a snowball effect of innovation, improved techniques enabling further improvements, and so on. I began to think about the improvement process, etc. And then I realized, oh, um, probably every organization that's going to change has an explicit category of activities. That one of them is doing your everyday work, and the other one is improving your capability to do that work. And that everybody's sort of sitting at a certain capability level, 
and there's a capability frontier out there because the technology is booming ahead and all kinds of options for how you change your learning and your human system. So, hey, it's a whole unexplored frontier. What can we learn from Engelbart's unfinished revolution today?